It's time for SHL News. First, I'd like you to thank you for being on, on my show. I'm, I'm also a podcaster for the CM Hockey League. All right. Um, these are going to be some, like, really questions from, like, I don't know, just questions of, of growing up as a hockey player myself yeah, yeah, I'd yeah. love to know about. Yeah. Um, like, when you got drafted in 2001, yeah. what was that like for you? Uh, well, the draft, uh, well, at that time, I, I really... Uh, I really didn't know. Uh, I, I thought I was going to get drafted, but really didn't know uh, for sure. Uh, it was a later pick. I mean, I was a seven rounder. I think I was 221 or something overall, which is, uh, and nowadays, I think there's only seven rounds, right? I think so, yeah. Yeah, so back then it was like 11 or 12, or I don't know. It was a lot of rounds, 10 at least. Uh, and um, uh, yeah, I, ca- I came for I, I, I played juniors that year in, ca- in Canada. So uh, uh, I mean, I, I, I thought I had a chance to get drafted. Uh, I, I didn't really know, uh, you know, for sure, for cer- for certain that it was going to happen. But uh, uh, you know, obviously, I had some friends that, that were higher picks that went to the draft. If your first three rounds, usually you go there. Uh, if you want to, if you're first round, obviously you go there and you go up on stage and all that stuff. But okay. uh, uh, for me, it was just, uh, you know, kind of sitting at home and then uh, waiting if it's going to happen or not. And it did happen. We actually watched it uh, uh, online, like, as the picks come up. So it was okay. actually pretty cool. Uh, I mean, I don't think I had any feeling of... Uh, actually be an NHL player at that time I think it was just kind of uh, how do you say you get accepted to a certain school but it doesn't okay. really give you anything so far right. you know what I mean so but uh, of course uh, once it happens at least then you know you kind of on the radar uh, and uh, uh, you know that there's uh, there might be an opportunity but uh, I, I, I think I still remember I, I I knew it was a long way to go, yeah. Okay. Yeah. And then in the season 2006, you actually got the call to play for the Devils, and you played. Yeah, I, I went back to Sweden for, for a couple of years. Uh, want, wanted to stay, but what was never, uh, uh, never really worked out. Uh, so, uh, or uh, stay in, in the U.S. after mm-hmm. I played juniors. Uh, uh, so I went back to Sweden for, for a couple of years, which I think in, in hindsight was probably good for my development, uh, playing on the bigger ice, uh, 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 maybe a little bit more skating, uh, puck control and, and different things, developing my game. And the same thing there, I played second division for, for two years and then I moved up and played the elite league for another three years before uh, uh, I got the opportunity to... Um, to sign as a free agent in New Jersey, and, uh, and New Jersey at that time was uh, kind of what what a lot of teams are now in in, in the in the uh, in the cap era, where uh, there was uh, an opportunity for for one or two younger defensemen to play. Uh, the league looked a little bit different at that time. I was not that many young guys. I was probably uh, uh, we had me, me and. Uh, Parisi and Sajak, I think it was the younger the younger guys on the team. New Jersey had a really old team at that time. A lot of guys around 35 and over 30. And uh, say that is, I'm 46 and I'm just getting back into hockey. So. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was a, it was a different time. I mean, now you see uh, you see a lot of teams having three, four, five defensemen that are 25 and, and younger. So uh, it, it was uh, it was uh, very different at that time. Uh, with some of the older players still around, obviously some of the bigger, bigger defensemen around too, uh, uh, that it, you don't really see anymore, that can't move and, and, and can't skate. So uh, there was an opportunity there, and uh, uh, I, uh, I was a combination, I think, of good play and being fortunate to uh, to have a contract that would fit in, mm-hmm. and. Uh, uh, yeah, it, it kind of worked out right away. I felt very at home, and New Jersey was uh, 
backwards a good place for a defenseman to start with uh, uh, a lot of structure and a lot of uh, uh, good ideas that um, defensively I still keep in my game today so so I felt fortunate being in that uh, obviously a, a winning culture uh, they won three Stanley Cups and in, in the years before so uh, it was uh, yeah, I felt very fortunate. It was a, it was a good thing, and it, and it matched up pretty good. Yeah, excellent. And then, in 2012, when the lockout happened, what was running through your mind? Uh, well, uh, I don't, I don't really know what anybody was thinking. Obviously, we thought from the beginning that it wasn't really going to be uh, uh, that much of, uh, of a delay. I think we thought we were going to kind of play right away. And then as the time uh, developed, uh, nobody really knew and it felt like the, that, that last time, uh, uh, how do you say, that the, the last deadline in January was uh, something that, uh, and again, everybody at the end kind of wanted. And obviously that's what happened too. Otherwise we would have lost the whole season, which would have been uh, uh, not so good, uh, especially for us. We had a good year that year in Chicago and won. So, uh, of course, it was a different season. Uh, pretty much eight eight months to prepare compared to having one or two. Uh, it's, it's it's a different thing. And then obviously having this experience too, coming here, uh, playing with the, the Flying Farangs uh, and the, the Land of Smiles tournament was something that. Uh, uh, it, was, it was a great experience and something that I think I probably never would have done otherwise. So, uh, yeah, it was, it was kind of a, a perfect year of hockey coming yeah. here and and, uh, and and winning a trophy and then going back to the NHL and, and uh, you know, obviously win the first Stanley Cup. So it was a, uh, a lot of good memories from, from that year, yeah. Excellent. I was going to ask you, how... Huh? How did you find out about like hockey in Thailand? Did you come to Thailand and then find out about it, or did you look it up before? Uh, it was actually one of my friends. That we talked about coming here for vacation and really just wanted to try to find front, find, find somewhere to skate uh, okay. and uh, uh, just practice and shoot some pucks or whatever, and, and uh, ended up, uh, I think it was... I think it was Scott Whitcomb and, and maybe some of the Swedes uh, that was that was in on the on the contact and and uh, uh, just yeah it was some emails back and forth and uh, in, the, in the beginning I think the, they thought I was joking and then somebody was playing a prank on them but uh, uh, and they didn't didn't know if I was going to show up or not but of course from from my part and our part was uh, it was very serious and uh, something we thought was um, perfect to go somewhere have a couple of weeks of vacation and at the same time play hockey which is uh, you know uh, uh, of course perfect yeah well that's awesome I mean it gives me the opportunity to meet you so um, and then you won your first Stanley Cup in 2013 as a hockey player growing up that was like one of the big goals that now I I was never that great of a hockey player I'm about average but just the Stanley Cup what was that like yeah, uh, I mean, it's, it's just one of those things I think it's hard to kind of describe. It's like, uh, I don't have children, but I would imagine once you have that first kid, it's kind of like, people can describe it, but but it's something that uh, uh, I think feels more surreal than anything else. It's something that you don't really, uh, you don't really understand. I think it took me... Uh, I mean, it probably a good two months, and that's what's nice in the NHL that you actually get the cup for a day, and you can bring it home, and you have a, uh, a party with your friends and family, and, and whatever it is. And that's at that point, it, it really kind of sinks in uh, that that this was actually something that happened, and not just in the commotion of everything. And yeah. you know, after when you win, there's a lot of things going on, and. And when the dust settles and you you coming home for me after a week, you go home to Sweden, you sit on the couch and you're like you're wondering if it really happened. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> so, I could imagine. So, so uh, uh, I mean, it's just a tough thing to bes- describe, but but a lot of uh, yeah, a lot of uh, very very happy feelings, of course, and and uh, uh, and, and something. Uh, 
you know, you remember the, the rest of your life, of course, but uh, also, uh, also what was cool in Chicago at that point, they had some other players that I won before, and, and uh, <coughs> their, uh, their joy for, for seeing you winning the first time, and it's kind of the same, uh, same for me in, in 15, when you see some other guys that, uh, uh, you know, you, you, you obviously you played with, but also knew for, for a long time, like, uh, you know, I played with Anton Vermet in, in juniors, and he came to Chicago at that point, and played for a long time, fantastic guy, and, uh, you know, see him uh, bring his family on the ice and, and taking photos, and, uh, you know, those are those are special things, too, so you kind of, you you, uh, uh, you in, enjoy it for, for different things at different yeah. times, you know, so it kind of evolves, which is, which is pretty cool, too, but, uh, uh, yeah, they're, they're, they're both special for, for different reasons, yeah. Excellent. Well, I've got one more question. Um, what kind of things would you like to see coming from Thailand in hockey? Uh, oh, well, that's tough. I mean, uh, I think what, uh, what you guys are doing now, trying to draw some attention, uh, trying to make things a little bit more professional and, uh, uh, you know, get for some of the younger players to... Uh, to find it interesting to, to play and keep playing and, and uh, like I said and I talked to the interview before it was sometimes it's tough to uh, get the, the type of competition you might need as a young player here to uh, uh, to move forward and get better but uh, you know some of them probably need to move abroad at this point but uh, uh, at least they uh, uh, or the, the the hope I think is that they they have in mind where they come from and, and then maybe uh, you know some of them have success and they, they can kind of carry the torch and, and keep uh, the league going and uh, uh, somebody wants to be on camera I think. That, that happens all the time for me it's no big deal uh, yeah so I think that's that's kind of the hope everywhere where hockey is developing that the, the it's like you plant a little seed, and then and then hopefully it turns into something big, and, and, and then uh, uh, it'll come back and, and inspire more younger kids to uh, to do the same. And uh, you know, for me, uh, coming here, it's uh, it's number one. It's it's for fun, of course, but uh, you know, if I can help out a little bit, just just being here talking to kids and and uh, you know, let them see maybe. Uh, uh, something a little bit closer than just watching it on TV. I think that's a pretty cool thing. And then, uh, if nothing else, at least they have a good time. Uh, usually, yeah. usually I go on the ice. I'm not going to do that this year, but uh, usually I try to go on the ice and run a practice or two, and and uh, you know have some fun with them too. And and uh, hopefully that's uh, that's something they'll uh, they'll remember. Yeah. Yeah. I know when I skated, like I got, I'm old hockey. <laughs> I got to skate as a young kid with like Phil Verkota and guys like that, David yeah. Christian. So yeah. it's like, that's something I'll always remember. Yeah. So, yeah. all right, excellent. Thank you very much. All right, thank you.